Good morning, everyone, and welcome to another virtual service here at SCAC EM. We're excited that you can join us this morning to worship our Heavenly Father. We welcome all of you and would like to give you some time to greet each other in the chat. We hope to be able to see you all in person very soon in our first on-site service on August 30th. Uh, we will provide you with more details as the date approaches. So let's take some time to quiet our hearts before worship. Let's bow down in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning to worship you in singing. Although we aren't able to gather physically together as a body of Christ, we are glad that we can praise you as a church through our hearts. This morning we gather to worship Jesus as he is the resurrection and the life. And through him, we are given new life. I pray that we will not grow complacent or weary because we are at home and may lack spiritual support from our brothers and sisters. But Father God, I pray that you will be with us and that you will continue to lead your people towards you regardless of the circumstances or place or situation. Father, we lift up this time to you. We ask that you would hear our voices and we pray all these things in Jesus' most holy and precious name. Amen. This morning, as we sing about songs regarding uh, Jesus uh, being the resurrection and the life, Jesus is the giver of life. Um, and so our call to worship verse comes from 1 Peter 1, 3 to 5. Praise be to the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you, who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. Let's sing, O oh, Praise the Name. I cast my mind. I cast my mind to Calvary, where Jesus bled and died for me i see his wounds his hands his feet my savior on that cursed tree his body bound and drenched in tears they laid him down in Joseph's tomb. The entrance sealed by heavy stone. Messiah still and all alone. Oh, praise the name. The Son of Heaven rose again. Oh, trample death, where is your sting? The angels roar for Christ the King.
Continue to sing God's greatness. He is the one that gave life to us. Great are you, Lord.
all the earth. And all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry, these bones will sing. Now is the time for offering. We would like to remind you that e-transfer is now available to us for us to be able to give our monies back to God, um, the money that he has entrusted us. So let us give back to him what he has given us. Let's pray for the offering. Father God, we thank you again for sending us your son, Jesus Christ, to be our redeemer. As we offer a portion to you, I pray that you will use what we have given you to do your good work. We pray that it would be used to further your kingdom here on earth and that those who do not know you yet will come to know you for the life that you can give them. We pray this in Jesus' most holy and precious name. Amen. Not only has God given us physical life, but new life in Christ. Through his victory over death, he is our resurrected king our living hope. Let's continue to sing praise to Jesus. How great the chasm that lay between us. How high the mountain I could not climb. In desperation, I turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night. Then through the darkness, your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul. The work is finished, the end is written, Jesus Christ, my living hope. Who could imagine so great a mercy, what heart could fathom? such boundless grace the God of ages stepped down from glory to wear my sin and bear my shame the cross is spoken I am forgiven the King of kings 
Jesus calls me his own. Beautiful Savior, I'm yours forever. Jesus Christ, my living hope. And hallelujah, praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah, death has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name, Jesus Christ, my living hope. And hallelujah, praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah, death has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name. sealed the promise your buried body began to breathe out of the silence the roaring lion declared the grave has no claim on me then came the morning that sealed the promise Now is the time for scripture reading. Please turn with me to John 11, 17 to 27. I am the resurrection and the life. Now when Jesus came, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles off, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them concerning their brother. So when Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him. But Mary remained seated in the house. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that whatever you ask from God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, Though he die, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who is coming into the world. You may be seated. And now I would like 
to invite Pastor Chris to come up and give us his message. Hello, everyone. We're almost at the end of summer. We've spent the entire summer in lockdown, but we are so grateful that we have been able to connect with each other through Zoom and through virtual services, as well as through the after service lingering that we have been doing, both with Gormley Congregation and EM as well. We've been looking, looking this summer on the question of who is Jesus. We have been examining the claims that Jesus makes of himself in the New Testament. And these claims are breathtaking seeing that the name of the Lord was so sacred that in the, New, in the Old Testament that no one dared to take it on their lips. So who is this Jesus? We better get to know him. It appears that ch three children were talking one day and bragging about their fathers, the kind that kids play the game of one-upmanship. The first kid said to the two, well, you know, my dad is a poet. He scribbles some words on a page, calls it a poem, and they give him $1,000 for that. The second kid said, that's nothing. My dad is a musician. He scribbles some words on a page, calls it a song, and they give him $2,000. And the third kid said, I got both of you all beat. He said, my dad is a preacher. He scribbles some words on a piece of paper, calls it a sermon, and it takes 10 guys to collect all the money. They were all proud of their fathers. Now, how much do we know Jesus? How much do we know our Heavenly Father to be proud of him? Now, even secular historians concur that Jesus is the most important person in history. Jesus is the most unique person who ever lived. He had no servants, yet they called him master. He had no degrees, yet they called him teacher. Had no medicines, and yet they called him healer. He had no army, yet kings feared him. He won no military battles and yet conquered the world. He committed no crime and yet he was crucified. He was buried in a borrowed tomb and yet he lives today. And this Jesus is the same yesterday, today and forever and comes to us as a master, healer, teacher and a victorious king and as a suffering servant suffering with us in our pain and our suffering. Now in our series on who is Jesus, we've been looking into the statements where Jesus himself said who he is. Today we'll look at the most outrageous of these statements that anyone has ever made. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. The portion that was read to us from John 11th chapter will form the basis of our meditation today. I want to look at three aspects of the going on in this particular chapter. First, I want to talk about the crisis in Bethany. And then the second point, I want to talk about the coming of Jesus to Bethany and the claim of Jesus that he made in Bethany and its implications for us in 21st century. First, look at, let's look at the crisis in Bethany. Now Luke introduces for us a family in the 10th chapter of Gospel according to Luke, where a woman named Martha invited Jesus to her house and her sister Mary and Lazarus, along with Martha, received Jesus and his disciples into their house. And it is written for us that Martha served Jesus with the gift of hospitality, while Mary sat at the feet of Jesus and learned deeper truth. We don't know much about Lazarus, but he's mentioned by John as Lazarus whom Jesus loved. Mary, Martha, and Lazarus had developed a close relationship with Jesus, an enduring relationship with Jesus. And John devotes an entire chapter to an incident in the life of this particular family. And this incident in John 11 chapter is set during the last week of Jesus' life on earth against the backdrop of the pilgrims that were coming from all over that region to Jerusalem to celebrate Passover. Now Bethany is two miles from Jerusalem and it's on, its, uh, on the way from Jericho to Jerusalem and would have been a very busy place at that time as pilgrims were coming to Jerusalem to celebrate Passover. 
in this narrative, John right away sets the scene that Lazarus was sick and his sister sent word to Jesus who was in a neighboring town with the message, he whom you love is sick. Notice that although this family was very close to Jesus, their lives were not free from sickness or heartache or despair. Jesus was accessible to them, even in their pain and their sickness. But when Jesus received the news that Lazarus was sick, his response is recorded for us in fourth verse of 11 chapter. Throughout this sermon, I'm going to be quoting uh, different verses from the 11th chapter of John. So in fourth verse of 11th chapter, John, uh, Jesus says, this illness does not lead to death. It's for the glory of God so that the Son of Man may be glorified through it. And he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. You know, sometimes the Lord tries our faith and wants to mold it into becoming, into making us better disciples. Therefore, Jesus' delay in answering our prayers should not be in any way wavering our faith in him or construed as his indifference towards us. The common sense and reason dictate that this seeming indifference of Jesus is a strange way of expressing love and concern, but not so strange if taken by eyes of faith. Someone said a delayed answer to prayer is not a denied answer to prayer. Jesus, as Jesus delays in coming to Bethany, Lazarus died. Note that by delaying, our Lord actually allowed life to cease. But as you look at this through the eyes of faith, Jesus waited for death in its fullness in order to vanquish it. Now into this crisis of death, pain and hopelessness in Bethany, Jesus comes. Now this crisis in Bethany has an eerie similarity to what you and I are facing with the global pandemic these days. This last several months, the lockdown, the restriction, the financial, the social, the emotional, the spiritual implications are staggering. And many of you have lost their jo your jobs or some have lost your loved ones and my heart goes out to you. Jesus still cares for us. You know, on August 6th, Canada's national newspaper, Globe and Mail, highlighted an article titled COVID-19 Triggers Soul Searching Among Canadians. And the article reads, and I quote, three months into a health disaster, unlike any they've seen, people are still struggling with their mental health as well as personal finances. But Paul show they're also reassessing their priorities and even finding hope for the future. As the hope that people had in many things is crumbling, our firm and steadfast hope is in the coming of Jesus into our lives, our cities, and into our country. Let's travel to Bethany and meet Jesus as he arrives in Bethany. Coming of Jesus to Bethany. Now Jesus comes to Bethany four days after Lazarus had died. His sisters Mary and Martha were still in deep mourning and many people of the community had come to comfort them. When Mary hears that Jesus was coming, she runs to meet him as he was still on his way. Unlike other times when Jesus visited them, there are no pleasantries exchanged, but she says right up, Lord, if you have been with us, or if you have been here, my brother would not have died in 21st verse. Notice that in this statement, Martha acknowledges Jesus' ability to heal the sick Lazarus. She says, if you were here, he would not have died. But somehow her faith comes short of believing that Jesus could raise Lazarus from death. But then in the midst of her limited understanding, there is a window of hope. Immediately in the next verse, in 22nd verse, Martha says, but even now, I know that whatever you ask from God, God will give you. Now, Martha's statement is a combination of faith and lack of faith. Martha's lack of faith made her to confine the Lord's power to his physical presence by saying, Lord, if you have been here, she confined her faith in Jesus, in his ability to heal to his physical presence. But faith made her to say, 
but even now i know that whatever you ask from god god will give you now i call it a tension of double fisted faith in the midst of her unbelief she is expressing her belief and faith in god you know sometimes we go through such times when we know our lord is able but we still look at problems with visible reality of the impossibility of the situation that is surrounding us are you going through a problem right now which seems insurmountable for you to believe that jesus can solve it listen to what jesus told martha he did not scold martha for her unfaith but gently spoke words of grace and built martha's faith in 23rd verse jesus said to her your brother will rise again you know what words of comfort they would have brought to martha but martha said to him i know that he will rise in the resurrect in in the resurrection on the last day now these are prophetic words in martha's coming out of martha's lips now martha reminds me of myself often interrupting jesus with my own display of knowledge rather than ask jesus what he means by saying your brother will rise again <clears throat> we see i just a sidebar here we often write off martha as someone who is less spiritual as she was worried about many things related to hospitality as opposed to mary who was sitting at the feet of jesus but here it is evident that she was learning spiritual truth from the kitchen martha's spiritual repository included good eschatology now eschatology is from two greek words and part of theology that is concerned with death and judgment and the final destiny of soul of human kind and she had some understanding about eschatology she says i know he will rise again she knows that there is a future resurrection now how do you think that she knows that there is future resurrection now obviously martha not only understood what jesus was teaching mary and her and her brother lazarus but she was aware of the old testament let me give you two examples in job 19 chapter verses 25 to 27 this is what job writes for i know that my redeemer lives and at the last day he will stand up upon the earth and after my sin has been uh, my skin has been destroyed yet in my flesh i shall see god whom i shall see for myself and my eyes shall behold and not another my heart faints within me you know job says and after my skin has been destroyed yet in my flesh i shall see god and daniel also reiterates this truth in daniel 12th chapter second verse and this is what daniel writes and many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt so martha knew that there was a future resurrection and martha was verbalizing this to jesus i know that my brother would rise up on the last day at the time of resurrection in response to martha jesus makes the capstone of all other i am statements that leads us to the claim of jesus and its implication the claim of jesus and its implication now jesus response to martha in 25th verse i am the resurrection and the life whoever believes in me though he dies yet shall he live and every one who lives and believes in me shall never die do you believe this now let's look at martha's response in the next verse in the 27th verse martha said she said to jesus yes lord i believe that you are the christ the son of god who is coming into the world you now martha knows whom she is talking to and got her christology bang on while overhearing from the kitchen she says lord she acknowledges jesus and calls him lord in verses 21 and 27 verse 27 she says yes lord i believe that you are the christ the son of god who is coming into the world now she understands the lordship of christ she did not call him jesus of nazareth she did not call him master she called him christ the anointed one the messiah now in this one verse or this verse is packed 
with Martha's understanding of who Jesus was from divine perspective. That flesh and blood would not have revealed to her. She says, you are the son of God. She understands that he came from heaven into this world. That's incarnation. But somehow with all that she knew, she comes short of faith that Jesus, he, the Christ, the Lord, the one who came down from heaven and raised his brother from the dead. But Jesus was, faith, was patient with Martha's faith process as there is a disconnect between what she believed and coming to the fruition of what she believed in. You know, this passage gives you and me so much hope as Jesus shows patience as we grow in our faith life. You know, one commentator writes, and writes the statement, he uh, writes about this statement, I am the resurrection and the life. And he says, was it, was it truth which Martha believed as an event in a far off future, so remote from the present life indeed, as to be powerless to comfort her now. Uh, let me read that again. Now, the I am the resurrection and the life was a truth which Martha believed as an event in a far off future, so remote from the present, or so remote from the present life, as to be powerless to comfort her now. Now, however little did Martha know or realize that Jesus was well able to meet her immediate need as well. You know, what an encouragement it is for us to know that our Lord reveals to us eternal things, but also meets our immediate need. First, let's look at how Jesus met Martha's immediate need. Now, Jesus asked Martha in 34th verse, where have you laid him? And as they arrive at the grave, the Bible records for us in the shortest verse in the Bible, Jesus wept. You know, this action of Jesus signifies that we have a Savior who is deeply moved by our pain, by our sorrow, and our loss. Now, the fact that Jesus wept reminds us that although God permits the suffering and pain in our lives, he also feels it with us, experiences it with us. Now, moved by his sorrow, our Savior acts by demonstrating his power even over death and grave. Let's pick up the story. Jesus simply ordered the stone to be removed and then with a loud voice commanded Lazarus, come forward. Now this is not a whisper or even a firm request, but it's a shout of raw authority and command. Augustine, in the fourth century said that it was good that Jesus called Lazarus by name or else the whole cemetery would have come out of their grave. Now the scene at the tomb must have been very fascinating as the crowd waited in breathless anticipation and to their shock, out came Lazarus. Out came dead Lazarus wrapped head to foot in grave clothes. And immediately Jesus asked the crowd to untie Lazarus the Jews who had strict rules about touching the dead body must have been in an interesting quandary as their rules strictly forbid them or forbade them from uh, touching the dead. So, well, so who was going to help Lazarus? After all, was Lazarus dead anymore? He certainly wasn't. And they untied Lazarus. You know, all the 36 recorded miracles performed by our Lord are intended to teach us spiritual truths and impact guidance and wisdom as we walk the narrow and difficult path of discipleship. Now this miracle underscores for us that we cannot stay in our tomb of iniquity and destruction nor remain in our grave clothes while our savior calls us out to be freed from the spiritual bondage. Now whoever you are that is listening to this sermon? Is it possible if you are in the tomb of iniquity where there is destruction and corruption, Jesus calls you out of that grave. 
or are you allowing those grave clothes to be tying you down so that you are not able to freely express your affection to Jesus and serve him? Jesus is calling you today. He's calling you out of our tombs to set us free from whatever grave clothes that are tying us down. Jesus said, I am the resurrection. And that affirms that Jesus does not merely offer resurrection, but he is the resurrection. He is the life. He is the resurrection because by his victory over death, he became the cause of man's resurrection. Now, Apostle Paul clearly gives us description in 1 Corinthians 15 chapter on what this resurrection is all about. Let me read a few verses for you from 1 Corinthians 15 chapter verses 42 to 48. What is, sown in, what is sown is perishable. What is raised is imperishable. What is sown in dishonor, it is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, it is raised in power. It is sown in natural body, it is raised a spiritual body. If there is a natural body, there's also a spiritual body. Thus it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being. The last Adam became a life-giving spirit. Jesus, the last Adam, he became a life-giving spirit so that you and I could get out of our graves, or get out of our grave clothes. And then Paul goes on to say in verse 46, but it, is not the, but it is not the spiritual that is first, but the natural. And then the spiritual, the first man was from the earth, a man of dust. The second man is from heaven. And as, as was the man of dust, so also are those who are of the dust. And as is the man of heaven, so also are those who are of heaven. And this is the call that God has for us through Jesus, the second Adam. And Paul goes on to say in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, the dead will be raised imperishable and shall be changed because death is swallowed up in victory. And then Paul goes on to say in the very last verse, he says, Therefore, my beloved brothers and sisters, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. Your labor is not in vain. And God, God is calling us today to be steadfast in the midst of the changes we have experienced. He wants us to be immovable. He wants us to be continuing to do the good work that God has called us to do. So Jesus makes it clear that the eternal life, uh, that this eternal life is possible not after death in a distant future, but through him in the present life. Jesus did not mean, of course, that believers will not die physically. He was not saying that believers will never pass through the gateway we call death, but rather that life he gives continues in us through the death. Death cannot blot out the life that Jesus gives. I want to point out three significant and profound truths about resurrection from three people that Jesus raised from death during his three years of ministry on earth. You know, one day a top Jewish official named Jairus came to Jesus seeking Jesus to heal his 12-year-old daughter as Jesus was on his way to Jairus' house Word came to Jairus, your daughter is dead. Don't bother the teacher anymore. And with this story is recorded for us in Luke's eighth chapter. When Jesus heard these words, he said to Jairus, don't be afraid. He continued to Jairus' house and raised Jairus' daughter back to life. The risen Lord tells you today, don't be afraid. Death has been swallowed up in victory. In other words, with resurrection, Jesus buried death. So the first message that resurrection brings to us is don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of death. Don't be afraid of calamities that you're going through or the challenges that you're going through. On a second occasion, as Jesus went to a town called Nain, as he approached the town gate, the only son of a widow was dead and was being carried for the burial, to the burial ground. When Jesus saw her, his heart went after her, went out to her, and he, Jesus said to that, Widow woman, don't cry. Then he went up and touched the buyer. 
and said, young man, I say to you, get up. The dead man sat up and began to talk and Jesus gave him back to his mother. And the message in this resurrection, don't cry. You know, Jesus wants us not to be afraid and Jesus doesn't want us to cry. He says, don't cry because he is there, a very present help with us, in our, with us today. Don't cry is the command that was echoed by the angels as Mary stood outside the tomb of Jesus crying and thinking that someone had stolen the body of Jesus. And this message comes back again and again. Don't cry. Don't be afraid. Don't cry because of resurrection. You and I don't have to be afraid of death. Because of resurrection, you and I uh, have, don't have to cry. That doesn't mean that we don't cry when we lose a, our loved one as they have passed from this life to another life. Apostle Paul writes in 1 Thessalonians 4, chapter, verses 13 and 14, he instructs believers that we do not grieve as those that do not have hope, as our bodies will be resurrected on that last day. Now, what a glorious hope we have. And both do not cry and do not be afraid are anchored in the words believe. The key to not crying or not being afraid is in the third person Jesus raised from the dead. As Jesus says to Martha, whoever believes in me, though he dies, yet shall live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this, Martha? No, believing in Jesus Christ has three components. As someone called them, the ABC of believing. A is agree with him. The Bible says, all have sinned, have come short of the glory of God in Romans 3.23. So we need to agree with him that we have committed sin. And then we need to believe in Jesus. It means saying, Lord, I believe that if I ask you, you will forgive all the wrongs that I've ever done. And you'll wipe off my bad record. And you'll come into my life and make me a new person inside. Not only do we agree with him, not only do we believe in him, but we commit to him saying, Jesus, I'm willing to follow you, to be your disciple, your student, your man or your woman for the rest of my life. Now, perhaps you're listening to this sermon, you've grown up in church, you've, got a, you've lived off the fumes of your parents' religion or your friend's religion. Do you acknowledge and agree with him that you have sinned? As the Bible says, all have sinned by believing in Jesus and trusting that he can wipe away all of your past and give you a clean record. And do you want to make commitment to, your, uh, to, to Jesus? that you are willing to follow him, to be his disciple, whatever the cost may be. Now, when we hear Jesus is the resurrection and the life, we need to do something about it. We cannot regard it as a curious piece of information or knowledge to put away safely in some file of a comparative religion. We need to take it seriously by responding to this message wholeheartedly with faith and put our trust and faith in Christ and receive that gift of life. And receiving the gift of life in Jesus sometimes means that we die in some meaningful sense to things that are contrary to this new life in Jesus. And maybe you're struggling to die to some of the things that are contrary to this new life in Jesus. And Jesus is near you. He wants to help you. Now, to choose and live life, we need to remove the stone of unbelief and hopelessness and believe in the majesty and the power of Jesus. And we need to appropriate this resurrection power and experience this new life that Jesus gives. Now, there are three aspects of life that Jesus talks about. First, he talks about new life. If you have never accepted Jesus as your personal savior, you might want to consider the claims of Jesus and respond to his invitation. Oh yes, you might have attended church regularly or even read your Bible, but never surrendered your life to Jesus or invited him into your life. The second aspect of life that Jesus talks about is abundant life. The John 10.10 10 records for us, Jesus said, I 
came that they might have life and have it abundantly. You know, this experience of abundant life is intricately connected with our submission to Christ, presenting our bodies as a living sacrifice and seeking his kingdom first. And then there is the eternal life which comes to us, which we experience right here on earth when he comes to us speaking the words, don't be afraid. Don't cry. He will wipe away our tears. And by believing that these are not mere human words spoken 2,000 years ago, but they are words which breathe new life and hope in us. Now, as I conclude this sermon, I just want to narrate this story. Jeremy was born with a variety of disabilities and age 12. He was with children much younger than himself in the Sunday school class. The teacher didn't know how much Jeremy understood the Bible stories. During one spring se uh, session, with Easter around the corner, the teacher told them the story of Jesus' death and resurrection. Then to emphasize the idea of new life springing forth, she gave each, each of the children a large plastic egg and asked them to bring it back next week with something in sight that shows this new life. The children responded enthusiastically. The following Sunday, the teacher began to open all the eggs as the kids eagerly waited. In the first egg, they discovered a flower. Oh, yes, life, she said. When the plant peeks through the ground, we know that spring is here. The next egg contained a plastic butterfly, which looked really real. And we all know that a caterpillar changes and grows into a beautiful butterfly, said the teacher. Then she opened the third egg, which happens to be Jeremy's egg, and it was empty. The teacher figured while well, Jeremy had not understood what he was supposed to do. Not wanting to embarrass Jeremy, the teacher said, teacher was about to open the next egg. Suddenly, Jeremy spoke up. Aren't you going to talk about my egg? Flustered, the teacher replied, but this egg is empty. Jeremy looked into her eyes and said softly, yes, but Jesus' tomb was empty too. Jesus was killed and put in there. Then God raised him up. So the egg should be empty at Easter. Now, Jeremy understood the meaning of resurrection. The resurrected Jesus is seated at the right hand of God. And the Bible tells us interceding for you and me with the Father. And Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. And that's what Jesus has been doing. And Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. Do you want to experience this resurrection right here on earth and have the confidence that he who has begun a good work in you will accomplish it. And that there comes a day where our bodies would be resurrected. Either for eternal damnation, if we don't believe Jesus, or to spend our eternity with God the Father, with Jesus and all the saints who have gone before us. May God help us. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this amazing opportunity that you have given to us, not just to hear, but to accept, to believe, and to make, take the steps in becoming your followers, allowing you to work in our lives, even as you call us out from our own deadness into life. So I pray, dear Father, that this would be a new beginning for some of us as we rededicate our lives to you. And for some who have never made that decision to make you their savior, this would be a day where they will bow their heads and invite you into their hearts. Jesus, we thank you that you give to us not only life, a new life, but you want to give to us abundant life and eternal life and help us to appropriate these promises. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Chris, for the message. Please rise with us as we sing our song of response. Worthy is the Lamb.
Thank you for this cross, Lord. Thank you for the price you paid, bearing all my sin and shame. In love you came and gave amazing grace. Thank you for this love, Lord. Thank you for the nail-pierced hands. Wash me in your cleansing flow. Now all I know, your forgiveness and Please remain standing for the singing of the doxology, and then afterwards we will ask Pastor Chris to give us the benediction. I just want to remind you that we host an after-service get-together on Zoom, and it would be lovely to have you join us. Praise God.
。首先嘅弟兄姊妹，你哋好，多谢你哋俾我呢个机会喺差传时刻里面嚟到同大家再分享大西洋华人福音个工作。认识我嘅弟兄姊妹都啊、呃、觉得怪啦，梁牧师而家多咗一件数，我想话俾你听，我呢边嘅数都系。因為呢個疫情嘅底下，啊，我係嚟記掛大西洋嗰個福音個工作誒熱鬧嘅。呢、这個疫情其實對大西洋嘅教會影響相當之大。三月十五號嘅時候，當時我仲喺蒙騰誒嘅我哋華宣會嘅當中，佢喺佢哋嗰度嚟到講道，講完道之後就同佢哋嘅理事會一齊嚟到開會、啊，安排教會前面一啲嘅事工。亦都講到啊，佢、呃、哋關於屏幕一啲嘅事情。第日我就翻到 Halifax， 翻到 Halifax 之後咧，跟住每個省都誒、呃、陸續嚟到宣告，所有教會嘅聚會啊，呢、呃、啲全部都要啊、呃、停止落嚟。呢啲嘅事情對大西洋嘅教會影響相當之大，因為大西洋啊喺呢四個省嘅裏邊。有八個嘅華人教會，加埋十個華人嘅聚會點，啊所佔嘅地方比我哋啊 Ontario 安省啊更加為之大，啊但係就分得好散，而呢啲教會基本上大部分都係冇教牧嘅同工，啊所以喺疫情嘅情況底下，啊佢哋所受嘅影響其實係更加大，啊。大家都知道喺疫情嘅底下，大所有嘅教會全部都係要進入用 Zoom 啊或者其他網上嘅途徑嚟去進行佢哋嘅聚會。喺呢啲聚會嘅當中，一般嚟講，啊細嘅教會佢都失去咗百分之三十嘅人去咗參加其他嘅教會。喺大西洋教會當中，我知道有啲嘅教會佢哋甚至乎失去咗百分之七十嘅人。啊，經濟啊來源呢段時間對佢哋好多嚟講都斷咗，啊聚會受好大嘅影響。所以啊，當我留呢呢篇嘅書嘅時候，係啊反映咗其實大西洋華人嘅時工係好需要，真係經常啊要有人到訪佢哋啊，好似一個嘅宣教嘅旅程嘅當中，去到佢哋嗰度嚟到去鼓勵佢哋，嚟到安慰佢哋，嚟到教導佢哋，嚟到幫助佢哋，與佢哋去同行。但係呢個疫情就停止咗呢啲一切，所以我唔單止留咗啊呢篇嘅書。其實我嘅電腦嗰啲嘅時間，而家全部、啊、都係而係用大西洋嗰個時間。啊，三月四月我一路都延留咗喺大西洋嗰度，到五月誒一號嘅時候，我就翻咗啊呢、这個多倫多。當大家而家睇呢個短片嘅時候，我應該已經翻到 Halifax 嗰度，喺嗰度需要隔離十四日。咁、啊、我就會再開始。嚟到去一啲嘅地方嚟到做一啲翻工工作，請大家都嚟到去祈禱，因為我所拎嘅咧就係、是、安省嘅身份證件、啊、所以暫時嚟講咧，我只可以喺 Nova Scotia 呢個省裏面咧，誒、啊、嚟到去唔同嘅、啊、工場裏面嚟到去做一啲翻嘅工作，我未必能夠去到 PI， 我未必能夠、啊、入到啊呢、这個 New Brunswick 嗰度。啊！嚟到去做嗰啲嘅方工作，所以請大家都嚟到祈禱，真係呢啲門可以開。誒、啊，有冇辦法？有冇個途徑？啊、有啲嘅特許俾我可以啊過得到境啊？入 PI 入呢個嘅啊廖斌叔嚟到去支持呢啲嘅方面嘅工作。喺八月頭嘅時候咧，啊馬光輝牧師就從廖 market 宣道會，佢就啊搬遷去到蒙騰嗰度。啊！然之後準備九月一號就喺蒙騰啊，我哋環宣道會當中嚟到去上任啊，作蒙騰環教會嘅牧師，所以我都希望可以快啲能夠去到嗰度啊，嚟對啊，同佢一齊嚟對同工啊，嚟對唔單止喺蒙騰呢個地方，喺廖賓雪其他嘅地方，我哋繼續發展一啲環方個工作個嘅事情。咁亦都喺九月啊尾嘅時候咧。係會係呢個中秋節，所以我都準備喺中秋節期間之前嗰幾個禮拜，我希望能夠去到唔同嘅一啲嘅福音站、一啲環聚居嘅地方，要做到一啲啊中秋節嘅探訪或者福音嘅聚會。所以請大家都啊為呢啲事情嚟到祈禱啦！啊，求神俾平安，求神俾一個通達嘅路，可以真係能夠喺呢啲嘅
啊、省份喺呢啲嘅城市或者小鎮嗰度能夠有呢個出入，大西洋嘅教會、大西洋嘅人其實都、啊、比安省對、啊、疫情呢啲嘢更加緊張，因為佢哋嗰邊嘅醫療、啊、設施冇安省咁多，咁所以都、啊、為呢啲事情嚟祈禱。我哋好幾個教會都準備喺九月再開始翻有啲、啊、集。誒睇嘅聚會，但係然會有啲嘅網上嘅聚會，咁為呢啲安排都嚟到去禱告，所以請大家喺呢啲事情上面嚟到去紀念我哋，幫助我哋啊！然後再有其他嘅，我就同大家嚟到分享。多謝大家。Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit abide with each of you and enable you. To experience the power that is released on the cross, even the power that raised Jesus from the dead, so that you and I can live this one life He has given to us with the resurrection power that Jesus makes available for you and for me. Go in Jesus' name. Amen. Just a few announcements this morning before we wrap up our service this week. Um, first of all, I'd like to welcome all of you who are watching with us online today. And so wherever it is that you are watching from, we're glad that you could join us, and we hope that you've had a meaningful time with us this morning during service. Um, if you're a guest, please do consider staying connected with us, and you can do so through our website. If you go to seac.org and you scroll down to English Ministry, and there you can find the links to all of our social media accounts and ways that you can contact us and stay connected and find out what's going on、um, with all of our different、uh, small groups and ministries. Also, again, a welcome to the Gormley Church congregation, and we are so grateful and happy that you continue to join us through the summertime as we continue through our series、um, of、uh, Who is Jesus? And so,、uh, welcome to the Gormley congregation.、Um, if you are watching, Together in real time at 9 30 a.m. this morning,、um, please consider joining us on Zoom immediately following the conclusion of our service. And there we will have a gathering time where we can chat and share and connect with one another. And so if you're watching from our online.church platform, our host will make the Zoom information available to you now in the chat. Service reopening. So, we are getting closer to the August 30th date where we will have our first in person English ministry worship service at、uh, SCAC Scarborough. And so, in preparation for that,、um, we have a short video that we can watch at this time. So, let's watch the video together. Oh no, I'm late! Running late? Check in and screening will take time. Please aim to arrive 20 minutes early. Oh, whatever, I'll just park anywhere. So you want to park wherever you want? Please park in every other spot so that when we leave, we can maintain social distancing. Welcome to SCAC. Have you been experiencing any symptoms? I'm okay. <coughs> Are you sure you're okay? If you have any respiratory symptoms, we、we'll、have been overseas in the last 14 days. We、we'll、have been in contact with a COVID 19 positive individual. Please join us for worship online and seek medical attention as needed. I didn't register. Can I go to service? So, you want to attend worship, but you didn't register. Unfortunately, who have not registered are not permitted to join us for in person worship. Before checking in, please disinfect your hands with sanitizer and then place your ticket into the designated box. Please wait. Wait, please. When you enter the building, a volunteer will take your temperature. Okay. When entering the sanctuary, 
an usher will guide you to a designated seat. I don't want to sit here, though. So you don't like that seat, eh? Seating arrangements are designated by the ushers. Only family members are permitted to sit together. Wait. When leaving the church, please follow the usher's direction in using designated exit. Excuse me, could you line up, please? Please line up. In order to maintain social distancing, washroom's capacity will be limited. Excuse me. Excuse me. Everyone is encouraged to maintain social distancing and wait in the parking lot for family members. We welcome you back to SCAC's in person's worship. May the Lord bless you with a safe and healthy time of worship. And so once again, our first in-person service will take place on Sunday, August the 30th at 1115 a.m. on uh, at SCAC main campus. And so uh, the service will be a special commissioning service for all of our students um, before the school year begins. If you are interested to attend, the registration page is now open. And so please visit the site that will appear on the screen. Um, and you can also go to our website Website to find the link and there you can read the guidelines and also fill in the registration form. And of course we'd like to extend the invitation to the Gormley congregation as well. If you are interested to attend and worship with us in person, um, you can also uh, feel free to register online. And just a note for all of us here that uh, registration is required and so there are no walk-ins um, as we have to um, adhere to the COVID-19 guidelines from the City of Toronto. And so uh, you will have to register and there is a limited number of seating of available and please so do so early if you would like to join us back at church on August the 30th at 11 15 a.m. We are still looking for volunteers to serve for our worship uh, in-person services not just for the 30th but moving forward and so again information is on uh, on how you can volunteer is on the website and if you fill in the form there we will get in touch with you directly about that. And of course, all of our details for our safety protocols and reopening plans are available on the website and you saw it in the video. And so you can just visit the website if you want the full details and to read through it. Um, SCAC, our church is doing a, uh, is holding a prayer summit. And so SCAC's prayer summit will take place on August the 22nd, the Saturday from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. on Zoom. And there we will gather together to proclaim God as the Lord of our church and also um, of our houses and our families. And we will take this time during the prayer summit to pray for, again, the students and the parents of this new school year that's coming up, especially with all of the uncertainties uh, surrounding the COVID-19 season. And so if you're interested to join us for the prayer summit, um, again, please visit our website and we can uh, and contact us and we will make the Zoom information available to you there. Um, Alpha, we have been uh, slowly announcing this uh, every week. And so now our launch, our official launch date will be um, September 22nd. So we are going to run the Alpha program on Tuesday evenings. And the first one will begin on September the 22nd. And so leading up to that, we still have about a month left to go. Um, continue to pray for God to open your eyes uh, to those around you and to give you the opportunities to engage and to invite those that he has placed in your lives to the Alpha program. And so again, this is done in partnership with Gormley Church and uh, September 22nd will be when it launches. Um, 
We announced this last week as well. Nexus is an online event where incoming grade nine students can meet up with other students upper years at their high school um, to get connected and to find out about the Christian fellowships there at the schools. Um, and so the event is happening either Saturday, August 22nd or Sunday, August 23rd, depending on your school district. And so for more information and for how to register, um, please visit the website and there you will find the link to the registration form. And also uh, the Toronto Alliance food drive um, that is also ongoing. And so uh, before we continue, let's also watch this short video for the food drive. Make me a blessing. Fill up the box. Toronto Alliance Church, Scarborough Chinese Alliance Church, and other local churches regularly support those in need, including hot meals, food banks, clothing banks, worship services, and prayer support. But many food banks in GTA are temporarily closed due to the pandemic. And the food shelves are always empty. Help us fill the shelves. Please donate the suggested items during church office hours from July 28th to August 28th. Please put your items in the blue box by church front door for collection. Item suggested. Canned food, cups mixed fruit, pudding, cup noodles, ground beans, canned pasta sauce, pasta, stew, and canned soups. Thanks for supporting. So once again, uh, the food drive will continue through the rest of the month of August. And if you do have donations for the food drive, donations can be dropped off in person at SEAC. And there is a blue bin located at the front entrance. Our adult ministries, our youth ministries are um, continuing to meet through the uh, COVID-19 summer season. And so again, for all of the latest information um, and uh, ways that you can uh, join in on these uh, different activities and groups, please visit our uh, website once again, and the full details will be there. In, um, and like I said, um, also the latest information from our SCAC response to COVID-19, the newsletter will also be on our website. And so please visit us at scac.org in the English ministry section and again registration for the August 30th worship service. Finally, Gormley Church, uh, your latest announcements and information are available on your website and so if you visit gormleychurch.org there you will find ways to keep connected with your congregation and also um, how you can sign up for your online newsletter as well. And so those are all of the announcements that we have this week. Again, we are so grateful and thankful that you have joined us once again. And we hope that this week will be, will be a blessing to you. And uh, hopefully you will join us again. And so have a great week. Take care and God bless.